Hey everybody, this is William Clausen with IBEX. Today we're going to install the high intensity turbo kit on the brand new 600 Catalyst. So let's get rolling. I'm going to start by removing the side panels. Set them out of the way. Next, we remove the hood. Zeus fasteners on each side. Sometimes this is a little bit of a getting used to. You release that. You come up here, up here, gently pull this on these. Pop it up. Over here, you remove the electrical. That's the hood. be working on this later for the intake. Next trick, get rid of the exhaust because we are going to make a really cool exhaust. Pull the two clips and slide the flanges off. We use a little string puller. Pull these off. <laughs> Slide out the donut. And it's really oily. which is typical of a brand new sled and break in. <clears throat> I usually like to hang them on the handlebars just so we can find it again. <clears throat> now we take and you pull the muffler back. Sometimes the little rubbers pop out, sometimes they don't. Out you come. We want to put the rubbers back in. Just gently squeeze them so that they're back in place. And we're going to want to take this rubber off as we will use it on the turbo muffler. Right now we can set that aside and you can throw the suitcase away. All righty. 11 16 sender inch to remove the pipe temp sensor. Pull it out, slide your zip tie up just so that you can kind of get it out of the way. You don't want it to get damaged. Now we can pull the pipe off. There is four springs in here. You can discard all of the springs except for the one I'll show you in a minute as we provide you with high tension turbo springs.
this spring you will want to keep. Now we slide the pipe forward, rotate it up, slide it out. Remove this donut. Well, if it's stuck on like that, that's fine. I like to remove it just if it's going to fall off. But that one's stuck, so that's good. Now, we're going to remove the header or Y pipe. This will require a 10 millimeter socket and sometimes a highly customized 10 millimeter end wrench. And then the two inner ones, you'll have to use an end wrench, um, which we have a few. We have a shorty, as well as one we've cut in half. Um, and then if you have any longer ones that have a really skinny center, that also can be helpful. Okay, now you have your Y pipe out, do the best you can. This one came right off because it's brand new if you're working on a used sled. These gaskets may be a little stuck. If the header stays hanging on there, take a razor blade and just gently slide it against the um, cylinder or the pipe. It doesn't matter, but stick to one side to try to peel the gasket off. This gasket stuck to the white pipe, didn't stick to the cylinders, so we're good to reuse it. Worst case, you may have to go to your local cat dealer and get new gaskets. Now, we need to loosen up the steering column. So to do that, Take the seat off here. There is a little quarter turn Zeus fastener. Release the seat, push it forward and pull up. Sometimes you gotta pull the Zeus out and then slide the seat back. That's the seat off. So right here, we have a Torx on each side. It's a T25 Torx, and on the back side it has an 8 millimeter nut. I do recommend putting this back together before you put the pipe on. Now, take the fuel cap off, tip this up, and gently start to pull back. You will need to release the key and the tether. Sometimes it's easier to unscrew them, sometimes it's easier to unplug them. Find out which way is easier for you, but be gentle because you can pull the wires out of the connector. Sometimes the assistance of a little small screwdriver 
don't know if you can see it in here, but there's a red tab on the tether. You need to slide the red tab back. And then above the red tab is a push button. You have to push on that to release the tether. Like I said, sometimes it's easier to just unscrew it. And then unplug this little plug, it's just a pinch, which is your accessory power. Now you can pull this down and out of the way. So now we want to loosen the steering column. It takes a 7 16 socket on the back side and a 3 8 end wrench. You're welcome to do them the other way around if you want. There is a nut and washer, so be sure to keep track of those. This allows you to manipulate the steering column out of the way as needed for the airbox removal. We're going to take the map sensor cover off. Be sure to keep track of this. We will be putting it on the new airbox. So try not to get anything on the sticky here. Unscrew the map sensor. Keep track of this bolt, we will reuse it. Unplug the map sensor. Sometimes you have to push it in and press down and then pull and pull the map sensor out. Now we want to remove these two bolts next to the airbox. These hold the airbox. Now we can remove the clamps. Those two bolts are T25. Now we can remove the clamp here, which is a six millimeter. Loosen that clamp. And this one. We have to move the steering column out of the way. Now, we want to take a little bar or a long screwdriver and gently pry these off of the throttle bodies. Sometimes it takes a little finesse. The one on this side is pinched against the bar. So if we can get it this far, we'll finish taking it off in a minute. Now I want to remove the idle air control lines. Pinch clamp, swipe, and then twist these to help kind of break the rubber loose. And then it should just pull off. There's one on each cylinder.
Now utilizing a 10 millimeter, you want to remove the throttle cable. Leave the top nut alone, just take the bottom nut off. If you pull on it, you can get it to come around. And slide it out. So you have to tip. See if I can show you a little better. There's a slot right here. So you have to tip the wire up so that the wire can slide through the slot and then push the pin out. Now take the throttle cable. Be very gentle as these are delicate. And slide it out through the bottom below the power valve motor. And I place it up here to just try to keep it out of the way for reinstallation later. So we're removing the throttle bodies. You're going to want to unplug the throttle position sensor. If you can get your hand in from this side, there's a clip on the side. I don't know if you can see where my finger is. You have to pinch it, which can be a little bit of a trick, especially with a gimpy thumb. Once you get that off, you have part of it out of the way. Now, find your little bar. You want to pull these idle air tubes kind of out of the way as best as possible. You want to get underneath this rubber here. It is very lightly glued, so you have to kind of work your way around it to release it. Now if you get your hand down inside the left side, inside and out, you can start to pull the whole thing out. Once it is out, now we have room for the throttle bodies. Now you should be able to reach down underneath, pull up, and then work them up and down to get them loose. Once they're loose, you can come in from the side and get Loose for the water line. It is a quarter inch socket. There's another water line on this side. You should be able to come in from the side here, loosen it up as well. You want to put a catch can underneath the snowmobile as it will dribble a little bit of water. It won't drain a bunch as long as you keep your antifreeze cap on. <clears throat> Taking a long screwdriver or bar. You can gently Press down on the top of the water line to release it. You'll have to work it back and forth one side to the next. <clears throat> As you see, there's a little bit of antifreeze came out and then it stops. Now we'll have to do the same thing for the other side. which is a little tighter because of the map sensor. Uh, sorry, excuse me, throttle position sensor.
This side may be easier with a pair of pliers if you can get them in there. I am sliding the clamp down and out of the way so that I can get a grip onto the hose with the pliers. Twist the hose a little bit to break it loose, like we did the the idle air lines. You should be able to pull it off with your hand. Now the throttle bodies are completely released. We can pull these out. And set them aside as the turbo kit comes with new larger throttle bodies. Now we want to remove the idle air control unit. Start by unplugging it. There's a pinch clamp right here. Sometimes you have to push down to release it and then up. Sometimes you have to put a screwdriver underneath to get it to release. So now we use a T25 to remove the idle air control. Be sure to save this as we will install it on the new air box. Now we can remove the air box. First, we need to cut the zip tie for the map sensor that's, been, that's holding it to the air box. The other step that we aren't showing on this video because we don't have it is if you have a trail sled with IACT, the suspension module will be bolted right here to the side of the airbox, you will need to unplug it and unscrew it accordingly to get it out of your way. Now finding yourself a good bar, we come in here, gently make sure we're not hurting the wiring harness, and gently pry up. Once you have it to this point, you may have to move the steering column over a few times, and the airbox will come right out. Okay, here we're going to cut out the excess rubber. Just grab a razor blade and slide it along the aluminum inside. All right, we're getting ready to go together. Now we need to take the two water lines and bring them over to the right-hand side of the sled. The one is already here. Now on the non-electric starts, it's not a big deal, but on the electric start, we're gonna have to reach underneath the starter and fish this line over so that we can get it over by the turbo. So <clears throat> it's a little bit snug. You might wanna call somebody with small hands. We can slide it out and around, bring it down underneath the electrical wires. Now both water lines are over here. Now we can start to put this together and we'll be able to reach those water lines to put the lines to the turbo on. All right, it's time to go together. 
Grab your new Ibex airbox. It should already have the sensor installed. If not, press the sensor in gently. Grab your old map sensor bolt, which is the silver one. Snug it up. Doesn't need to be singing tight. Just till it bottoms out and you could do it with a screwdriver as tight as you can get it with a screwdriver, you'll be fine. <clears throat> now, we want to slip the airbox in. Come in here. Should be able to manipulate the column to get it down in there. Just like butter. Now, we're going to want to reinstall the idle air. Make sure your O-ring is on. <clears throat> Tip the box back. Slide this down. Slip it in. Grab your screws. Don't drop them. I usually like to start one side and start the other side. Okay, now your idle air is on and it is time to install the throttle bodies. You're going to want to pull your idle air hoses back up out of the way again. And you're going to want to make sure <clears throat> that your throttle position sensor is accessible. Keep your clamps slid all the way back. And we'll get the throttle bodies. Your throttle bodies should come pre-assembled like this. Injectors and fuel rail are assembled. We have the hoses on here. You're going to need to loosen the two clamps up so that you can actually slip it onto the airbox. We're going to go down and tip them onto the reeds and then we'll slide the airbox on. <clears throat> These clamps are eight millimeter. We're going to just loosen them up real quick. Get them pretty loose, which could be annoying, but I would actually slide them off to start with. And then just slide it in underneath. Move the steering column over as far as you can. Now, you want to be careful using this fuel rail as a pry spot. You got to try to use the base of the throttle body. You can reach down in from the left side to help this side. You want to get it tipped up enough that the bottom hooks and then you can rock it into position, snap them into place. They should have a nice pop. And there we go. Now we can hook up the clamps again, sliding them into position and tighten them back up with that six millimeter wrench. We want to slide it back into its little slot and you may have to use a screwdriver to tuck it up underneath the injector cup. Tighten it 
tightening them down. <clears throat> These clamps, you want to make sure they're lined up all the way around and you want to get a small crush on the rubber. So they will be decently tight, but they are breakable, so don't get too rowdy with them. It's not a big deal if you can't get it tucked underneath as long as the rest of it is in the groove that the reed cage has for it. There we go. Now we're ready to do the air box. Now the throttle bodies are installed. You want to hook up the throttle position sensor down here. Incredibly important. Doesn't work great without it. And that's an easy one to forget. <clears throat> then we want to fish the um, map sensor connector back. We will plug that in in a little bit, but make sure it's over here. So we have our fuel line and the oil line. We send this purposely. This is loose as you've got to get it twisted the right way around once you install it. So remember once it's installed to tighten that up. We're gonna go ahead and get these installed now. <clears throat> gonna start with the fuel line. You'll have to get in behind the oil tank here. One hand can kind of go underneath so you can grab hold of the fuel line. The other hand has to go over top to squeeze the coupler. With your left hand, you want to push it in and then squeeze the coupler and then pull back and it will release the fuel line from the stock fuel rail. Once it is released, you can, oh, you can pull it back here a little bit and then we'll have to twist it. So we want to take the fuel line. Take the straight bit here, reach down, tip your old fuel line up to the back of the engine, plug it in, and then we're going to tuck it back down in there and feed this across the edge of the engine. Be careful with all the wires, making sure you don't damage anything. Gently pull on this. You'll need to rotate. The fuel line. As you pull on it. To twist. The stock fuel line a little bit to aim forward. Then you should be able to bring it all the way up in here. And connect it to our new fuel rail. Now slide your fuel line back in place on the tank and pop it back into its groove. Now we're going to remove the oil line off of the fuel rail. I don't know if you can see it down there. There's a little green oil line. We're going to remove that and move it over and hook it on to this fuel line.
taking a pair of pliers. You should be able to pinch the spring clamp and pull it up. And then gently grab hold of that line. And pull it off. Now reaching in. And grabbing that oil line. You can fish it out of this bundle of oil lines. It is the rearmost oil line on the on the oil pump under here. Try not to lose the little spring can't clamp. Takes a little bit of fishing here. You may want to try and fish this out before we put the fuel line in. Now, we can take this line, run it around, and plug it in to our new fuel line brass fitting. Be sure to put to reinstall the spring clamp to keep the line on. And we have the fuel rail, or the fuel line installed with the oil hooked up to it. Now, we'll install the oil line. Okay, got the oil lines. What we're going to do, we're going to want to unscrew the stainless steel line off of our pack, get it out of the way for right now. This is going to sit up in there just like this. And this oil line will hook up that. In the meantime, I'll show you which line we got to disconnect. It's the forwardmost line here. We're going to have to disconnect it from the top. Now, this line down here is the return, which is what that's connected to. And that return goes into the bottom of the tank. So as soon as you unplug this, it's going to start emptying the oil out of the tank. So you're going to have to keep it plugged. <clears throat> Our fitting that that will connect to that green line will connect to this fitting. This fitting has a one-way valve in it. So as soon as you plug it in, it will stop it from draining oil everywhere. So that's gonna be the quote unquote fast move that you have to do first to make sure you're not draining oil. There will not be any oil come out of the oil pump, which is where the black line's gonna go. So let's get started. <clears throat> you may have to attempt to carefully spin spring clamp around so that you can actually get to it. You can use, if you catch the pliers on the single tab on the opposite side, you can use it to spin it, release it, and pull it down. Now, we're going to want this to be tucked in down here. <clears throat> I recommend getting yourself a pair of needle nose pliers so that you can slide this off and pinch the line. You'll have to 
twist and release the rubber. And you can keep the line somewhat pinched. And reinstalling it onto our pressure regulator. Then take the spring clamp and slide it back up to keep the hose on. Now I'm gonna pull this up in here, tuck it around behind. pump as much as possible. Okay, we've moved the oil line back a little bit to try to give us a better angle. We want to make sure that our oil line is not kinked. Okay, after you've hooked up the green hose, we got the spring clamp tight. Now we're going to hook up the longer hose back to the oil pump, slide it on, tighten up your spring clamp. Be sure not to squeeze these spring clamps too much as they will lose their spring. <clears throat> that should be on there. Now you can take and lay this in over here. We'll hook up the oil line in preparation for the turbo to be installed. When you hook this up, make sure this makes a nice loop. You may have to readjust the fittings a little bit. If you do, make sure that they remain tight enough to not leak. There is over 60 pounds of oil pressure in these lines. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to hook up the air box to the throttle bodies. One of the easiest little tricks is to open this up. Then you can reach in underneath and feel the air box. Make sure the steering column is shifted over to the left to make sure that it's out of your way. using a little screwdriver to reach in underneath and peel the boot so that it's actually ready to go on. There it goes. Slide the box all the way forward. Should sit nice and tight now. Now we take the clamps, an eight millimeter. We loosen the clamps all the way up and fish them around. Being sure not to bend them while you fish them.
The, this second one may take a bar to gently pry the throttle bodies over just a little bit so that you can get it to slip past the frame right down here. As the rubber boot is right against the frame. You can fish it around and get it started and then use the bar to slide the clamp further onto the boot. Now you're going to want to use the bar to pry the throttle body. You can place it on that round bit right there. It doesn't take very much, just a little bit of pressure. And then you can slide the clamp another bar, making sure that it's just barely on to the hose. Now it is incredibly important that these clamps are on square with the hose and just barely on about a screwdriver width onto the actual silicone. This side is too far on, so you take a screwdriver or a bar and manipulate the clamp into place. And then we tighten them up. And there you have the airbox installed. Okay, this is the fuel injector wiring harness. So we're going to plug this in. You're going to have to start by coming in here and you'll have to clip this zip tie here and there's one more down here that's on the frame. You need to clip that one as well. Now this upper zip tie, this connector you were connected to, is the fuel injector wiring harness. We're going to disconnect it. You should have two parts, just like this. There will be a male part here. Plug into the female that you unplugged. And there will be a female part that you'll plug into the male. Now you can fish this excess down out of your way and then you have the two injector plugs. The short one goes to the mag side, the long one goes to the PTO side. So now you'll want to fish these up behind the power valve motor here. Second one, stretch it across, plug it in, and plug the short one in right here. <clears throat> now you'll want to turn this over and lay this sort of across the fuel rail. All right, let's get the idle air control hoses hooked up. So we're gonna fish this long one up underneath the steering column. So after having fished the hose in, connect it to your idle air, go ahead and put your clamp on. Now we'll do the other side. Okay, we're gonna hook up the left hand, or sorry, the right hand um, idle air here. 
I'm gonna slip it on. Hook up your spring clamp. And then come in and hook up your fuel line. All right, now we're going to go ahead and rehook up the rubber boot in the front. A little screwdriver helps kind of press these two rubber ones into place. And then you take your plug, slide it back in and push the clip in. Same thing for the other side. Let's get the steering column put back together. We'll start with the bolts. Now be careful with these little clips. There is a clip on each side to hold these together, but they do break if you're not gentle with them. So make sure you're careful with it. Remember, there is a washer and a nut. These do not need to be tightened very tight. Torque to spec. Torque to spec. Because you can crush the plastic and it'll make it hard to steer. All right, we're going to hook the plastics back up. I need to take the fuel cap back off. Bring this up in here. Plug in this. A little bit snug under here. Hook up your wires. Turn that up. Reach up in here and make sure you hook up the key. Now we can bolt it back down. The T25 Torx and 8 millimeter hand wrench. Through the plastics, through the bar. Put the nut into the hand wrench. Work to spec.
Same thing on the other side. Now put your fuel cap back on. And put your seat back on. <clears throat> There's a little hook in front of the seat. Hooks on here. Make sure you get that started. Slide it forward. And then push it down in the back. Quarter turn Zeus. And your seat's back on. Okay, I want the throttle cable to come down behind the power valve motor underneath the fuel rail over top of the idle air and slip it in. Now, we want to tighten up the bottom nut. Torque to spec. Now let's go ahead and hook up the manifold absolute sensor and your idle air control. All right, we're going to go ahead and install the heat shield over the throttle bodies. Now you're going to want to take and fish it in here. Laying it down flat, take here, increase folding over a triangle. Crease it really well here. And then we're going to slide it back out. And we're going to cut along that line. Okay, set aside the small triangle piece. Slide this down in here. If your engine is used, you're going to want to clean the engine as best you can. Slide this down. Start by peeling this back here. Stuffing it under. Laying this over, make sure that you wrap it around the fuel rail and injectors. Then folding this back, you can pull the rest out, slide it in, make sure you cover the fuel line over here. And lay it down. It may not stick at the bottom here, that isn't a big deal. Make sure it's stuck on the fuel rail, particularly up front. <clears throat> triangle piece you cut, lay it out like this, peel the back off of it, and we want to lay it just barely on the edge right here, firmly pressing down, working it around, and folding it up the side here. We're going to place the original heat shield over the map sensor using the two little torxes that you pulled out of the old box. Now, bend it down a little bit and wrap and stick the original heat shield just like so. Let's go ahead and put the white pipe in.
Now we have the header on. Okay, let's go ahead and put the pipe back on. Slide it through here. Pull the plastics back a little bit. Slide it up inside so it sits nice. You want to hook on our high pressure turbo springs. The short side goes towards the engine. Okay, make sure you put your pipe tent sensor in and tighten it up with a 17 millimeter. Let's install a turbo. First thing you want to do, grab your coolant lines and connect them up to the two lines that you fished over this way earlier in the video. So we want to slide them together here. Might take a little love. Make sure you keep the factory clamps. Slide them on up in here. Using a quarter inch nut driver or socket, tighten them up. Now, we gotta put the turbo in. You need to get yourself a handy dandy razor blade and cut the rubber back until you touch the aluminum. Now the turbo will fit into the hole. Now, with your old stock muffler, you need to take out the rubber using a little flathead screwdriver. Gently press this out, and then you can discard your stock muffler. On the bottom of the turbo, you will see that there's already two installed, but there's a third that needs to be installed. Same thing, start pressing it in, and then using a small screwdriver, gently finish pressing it through the hole. Make sure that you don't rip the rubber while you're doing it. Twist it down and flat. Make sure they're all pushed all the way in. And we're ready to slide the turbo in. <clears throat> now, you want to bring the turbo in like this and feel up through the hole to make sure that the, it slips into the exhaust. Once you're close, we'll go ahead and install the water lines onto the turbo. It does not matter which line goes on which side, but the water lines go on the two opposite sides of the turbo. The oil line will go on the front. I'm going to start with the water line on this side. If you need to, you can kind of pull it back. Using a 916 end wrench, make sure you snug these up.
you may also want to just double check that the banjo bolts on each side are tight. These are probably your number one place that wants to leak. We do attempt to get them tight enough here, but sometimes they set and need to be retightened. <clears throat> now, we need to finish up the oil line. The oil line, the straight will go towards the oil regulator and the elbow will go on the turbo. Generally, we have this facing straight down. want to tighten this up. With the 90 degree aimed straight down. Now we want to get some oil. Little trusty squeeze bottle. and try and force some oil down this tube. There is a restrictor down there, so this process is a little bit slow. I generally kind of hold a lot of pressure on the bottle for about a minute, and then we'll double check it after the turbo is finished installed. Now, we'll fish the oil line back up in here. We'll start to move the turbo forward. Once again, we want to make sure it seats in this hole. Lift the pipe up. And in the back here, you'll see there's a, a post that needs to sit on. Now, you wrap the oil line up and connect it to the regulator. Sometimes it's better to run it under the electrical, sometimes over. We have noticed a serious inconsistency in these. Now taking a 9 16 and a 5 8 end wrench, tighten up the oil line. Okay, I'm going to tip the turbo back again now that we have all the lines on. I'm going to put the clamps on. so that I can get to it. <clears throat> now, this particular one I'm installed, I installed the pump hose onto the air box first. Sometimes it's easier that way, sometimes it's easier to leave it all together as it'll come as an assembly with the hump hose already on here. We've noticed, like I said before, the wiring harnesses seem to be slightly different in each vehicle. <clears throat> so, I'm going to lay it in there. Slide it in a little extra far. This time, we should be able to place the turbo for the last time. A little bit of a trick, you have to lift that up. 
and start to slip it in. And then come back over here and make sure that you're in. Lift your pipe, slide everything together, and then just start working it all till it sits in place. Now, you should be able to tighten everything up. Sometimes with this one, it's actually easier to disconnect the ECU here. There's a pinch clip on each side. Slide it down. You can shove it back out of the way a little bit. Get yourself a long extension. Sometimes there you go. Pull it back out. Plug your ECU back in. Okay, now we're gonna slide the donut on, pick the pipe up. Set it on down and use the supplied high tension springs. Now these are 45, sorry, excuse me. These are 90 degree hooks. I do want them to be hooked in like this on each side so that the hook is out. And if you come to this side, you'll see the same. I'll put it on that way, just like that. <clears throat> now, generally I put my foot kind of on the waste gate. Pull it on to make sure that the turbo doesn't lift out of place. Now we can go into putting the intake on and the hood on. Okay, should have received the intake tube like this. Take it apart. Beautiful. Look at that thing shine. Now, using an eight millimeter, four or five sixteenths, loosen the bottom clamp up, slip it down over the turbo. What I would do is slip it down all the way on the turbo side, clamp it up. The first time, you will want to leave the top clamp loose so that you can adjust the height of this tube for the hood. After that, you can leave it tight and the hood will come on and off without having to take the clamp off. All right, last step is to put the hood together. There's only a whole ton of screws in the bottom here. So, I recommend an impact to make it go quick. The wing uses a little longer screw, so make sure you set those aside as we will reuse those ones.
pull this whole thing off. Take this piece out, set it all aside. And now we can install ours. All right, we're gonna start with one side or the other, it really doesn't matter, but place this on. You'll have to kind of shift it around. You'll feel it all of a sudden kind of seat. It is a very snug fit. Sometimes you have to put it in the bottom first and then slide it down. Then start going back together with your screws. Now we're going to get the carbon fiber piece, slip it on, and lay over the next side. Right, I'm going to take a little bit of grease. We're going to run it all the way around the O-ring. This will make it easier to slip the pipe on. <clears throat> now, take the pipe and spin it as you slip it on. Slide it on. Now take your other half. Grease it up good. Now, you'll have to lift up on it a little, twist this in, and massage and twist as much as you can. Once it slips in, just press it in. Flip this down inside. And line everything up. And then same as the other side, you wanna kinda of start from the top and work your way down, making sure that it sucks it down as you go. All right, now the final piece to the hood is the hood latch. You slide it in to the groove, slipping it down, pulling the hood back, pressing it down, and install the screws back in it. Be sure to use the machine screws for the side wings.
There we go. Ready to put the hood on now. Set it all on just like you do stock. Sometimes you have to look out for some of the wiring harness up here. <clears throat> now, you're going to want to line this up so it slips in. Make sure these don't catch. Give it a good pop. Now we want to slide this up and into the hood. Giving it a twist. Once it's up in there seated good, we can tighten up the clamp. All right, make sure you plug your hood back in. All right, last thing we're gonna do is just double check the prime on the turbo. Make yourself a 10 millimeter. Take the block off plate off. And take your trusty little squeeze bottle. And fill it up with a little bit of oil. Make sure it drains in. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but you can see the oil now is starting to want to flow back towards, towards me. So I'm going to put flange back on. Now we highly recommend doing this before you put, or before you take the sled out every fall after it's been sitting all summer. Just prime the turbo from this port. It'll help maintain oil on the bearings while everything repressures up from sitting all summer long or any time that it sits for a long period of time. Okay, want to torque these to spec, 100 inch pounds. There it is. Okay, grab your tuner. Be gentle when you press this in. You spin it in until it stops, push it in, spin it in, then gently snug it up. Now, right here is your diagnostics port. Unplug it from the blank cap. Plug the tuner in place. Now, take your power cord. Plug it into the tuner cable, making sure I always lay it over and make sure your reds line up and your blacks line up before you plug it in. If they're backwards, bye bye ECU. Now, tuner will power up. You'll most likely get a yellow Wi-Fi, which means that it was linked to Wi-Fi, but it doesn't have a connection. So what we need to do is go to Wi-Fi, hit forget. Once it blinks away, click connect. Select your Wi-Fi network. Put in your password. Press connect and the check mark at the bottom. Now 
Now it jumps out. Sometimes you will get a yellow. If that happens, power it off, power it back on. Now it will connect, you see the green. And now it's doing a software update. device will reboot. Now, once we're on the home page, as long as we have green, we've got Wi-Fi connection. Now, the first thing we want to do is learn the new injectors. As you may have seen, the injector codes were sitting on the front of the tuning device. We also gave you spare stickers that you can stick to your snowmobile. We usually stick them to the TP. Now we want to go to learn the injectors. We want to go to diagnostics, CTEC 800, and press learn injectors. Wait till it says injector relearn finished successful. Press the X. Press the X again. Now we're going to go to download, CTEC 800. The later updates may just say CTEC. You gotta use the license. It may say CTEC and not CTEC 800. Don't be concerned about it saying 800. It still works on the 600s. Now it's going to go out and grab all of our latest tunes available for your snowmobile. So now you'll see all the available tunes. You're going to want to select from A, B, or C, whichever one is currently recommended. Contact us. For that information, the current one we're using as of this video is Tune B. Generally speaking, Tune A will be the most flushed out with B and C consecutively being newer tunes as we work together to improve the tunes. Once it says flash complete, you can press the X and you can kill the power. <clears throat> okay, once you're done with the downloader, you're going to disconnect this back. You can put the downloader away and make sure you plug your diagnostics cable back into the cap to keep water out of it. Now you can put your side panels on and go ride.